Hello, I'm Tim Harris. This is Julie Harris, and this is Real Estate Coaching Radio. That's right. So make sure that you hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any future episodes. Thanks again for popping by. Hit that like button, and don't forget to leave your comments and questions so we can get right back with you. We will. Thank you for continuing to make our podcast, Real Estate Coaching Radio, the number one listened to podcast for real estate professionals in at least the United States. And let us know what you think about this video. Leave your comments below. Thank you. Three, two, one, and we are back. And this is your emergency alert to all real estate agents. That's right. Every single one of you. This is an emergency. What's the emergency? Where is all of the inventory? You guys are asking that all day, every day, and it's still missing. Where is all the inventory? We are still at historic lows. Where are the homes for sale? After all, it's spring is, on? spring is sprung. Where are the listings? And you need not one, but two things. You need to get your buyers in contract and you need to find more listings for your own listing inventory. So in this two-part podcast series, we're going to show you how to accomplish both. Ready to get started? Heck yeah, let's roll. All right. Now, before we get to the secret sources and strategies to find the inventory, and guess what? Your MLS is not the only thing. We're not going to talk about too much about that. Before we get to those, here are some thoughts to consider. We're going to have two thoughts, then we're going to get to the points. Number one, how well do you know what your buyers are actually looking for? Are they or you being too specific or overly obsessed with certain areas, amenities, or schools? It may be time to discuss having some flexibility. Know your buyer clients must have versus would be nice to have criteria. In Premier Coaching, there is an entire section that's just about working with buyers. It includes a actual buyer presentation, very similar to that um, of you, you'd use when trying to uh, you know convince a seller to list with you. You're going to have to have a buyer presentation explaining to the buyer what you do as a real estate professional. Many of you, I would say 99% of you, have never actually formally presented to the buyer why they'd want to work with you. We have been sharing with you guys for the last... I think four years, why we believe that buyer's agency as, you know, the commission and the rest of it, how that's going to no longer be essentially an entitlement to the transaction. In other words, do not be surprised if in an MLS uh, near you in the next few years, you're going to have to start being able to, you're going to have to be able to explain to the buyer why they want to work with you because the buyer is going to be the one paying you. Right now, the seller pays you. And so it's very easy to get a buyer to work with you because after all, it doesn't cost them anything. Yep. Well, what if in the future, like as if you were a listing agent, you now have to explain to the buyer what it is specifically that you're going to do and why you're worth whatever you choose to charge them as a fee or a commission, right? And that is all part of Premier Coaching. One of the things that triggered my thinking about this is there is a very exhaustive and thoroughly um, comprehensive buyer pre-qualification script, and all of you who are in Premier Coaching, which is thousands of you, make sure you're using the buyer pre-qualification script to ask all those tough questions, but ask them in the conversational manner that the script is written, and you will discover very quickly that a lot of the buyers that show up in your life say, I only want to live in this community, these types of homes, they're actually open to all kinds of different options. Or, you know, I want something with a, you know, I want five acres. That's something Julie and I used to hear a lot when all we sold time. real estate. And then the question would be five acres. That's interesting. So why specifically do you want five acres? And they'll say, well, I want privacy. Oh, well, so if it were say a third acre, but it had a super private backyard back to tree lines and you didn't see or hear your neighbors, would that work? Well, that would work too. Well, I've just saved you from having to drive all around God's green earth looking for something with five acres. You guys get it? So when you learn how to pre-qualify using our scripts, you're going to save yourself an enormous amount of time. And yes, you can join Premier Coaching now. The description, it's the link to join for free is in today's show description. Scroll down. It's in uh, on YouTube. It's on Spotify, all the podcast listening devices. Or you can just go to premiercoaching.com. Rule number two, Julie. Yes, stop relying only on your MLS. This is one method, but it is no longer the method. Commit to following the strategies that we're going to lay out for you for every buyer who is qualified and motivated, especially those who have listings to sell, ideally with you, or simply refer them to an agent who will do a better job for them. It's not fair for buyers to not be in contract simply because you haven't been strategic enough to actually find them something. Now, why is no one else telling you guys to not rely solely on the MLS to find inventory? It's because when they sold real estate, uh, they were frankly spoiled by everything being in the MLS and sometimes mm -hmm. even new construction. 
Or they maybe never have learned all the different sources and the different places you can go for lists of homes for sale. You've got to rise above whatever the limitations are of the things you've been thinking or the people you've been listening to and realize there are homes for sale everywhere. They're just not in the MLS. Oh, and here's a newsflash for all of you. When you hear about this record number or record shortage of homes for sale, blah, 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 they're talking about homes in the MLS. Any of you who are successful, which is a lot of you are incredibly successful at listening to our show, you know, and I'm sorry I'm about to spoil the big secret, that the best homes are hardly ever in the MLS because you've got a list of buyers that want to buy them, right? I'm not talking about pocket listings or off-market listings. I'm talking about all the other sources we teach you in Premier Coaching. That's right. And I would say from my own personal coaching schedule, probably of everything that everybody's got in contract, it's got to be 35 to 40% of it never flowed through the MLS, ex except to put it in to take credit for the volume and the sale. Or right? they don't at all. Or I mean, I, frankly, you don't have to. But they, you don't. Maybe they don't <laughs> yeah. want the drama, honestly. Well, that's right. Okay, now the goal, again, of our following strategies is to A, find off-market homes for you to list, and B, find off-market homes, meaning not in the MLS, for you to sell to your buyers so they no longer lose out to competition. If you want to stop competing and losing, you must find homes that they are unlikely to compete on. So that should be really the third point, stop competing and losing. Okay, now- Well, let me add this yeah. in there too. You're also, when you follow Julie's points here, going to be dealing primarily, like 90% of the time, 99% of the time probably, with sellers that actually have to sell. Yes. Some of you are being tortured by the buyers that want to, I'm sorry, the sellers that want to sell if all the stars align, the pigs fly, and whatever, whatever, right? In other words, they're not motivated. The sources that we teach you in Premier Coaching are the absolutely must sell, most motivated, have to sell, not an option to keep it, sellers. Yes, that's right. And we're not going to get to all 20 today. We're going to do the first six. So point number one, of course, we're not saying don't use the MLS. So we have to start with the MLS for point number one. But get cre more creative with your MLS searches. If your buyers keep losing out to multiple bids, search your MLS using the same criteria, but homes that have been on the market for more than 60 days, more than 90 days days, etc. They probably won't be competing for those homes. Maybe they would consider a duplex in the same area, especially if it provides income for them. Have you had these conversations? And Tim, I have had so many coaching clients thank me for that point because the coaches drill down on this. You and I drill down on this. You use the example of the five acres. I, I had an example from uh, one of our coaching clients in Columbus that said, you know, he, he finally embraced, he's got this huge amount of buyers. So why that neighborhood? If your search in the MLS is set up just for one zip code or even worse, one MLS code in the, you know, why is that important? And they said, well, it's because I really like the park in that neighborhood. Julie, it was worse. You have a better example than even that. When you were helping, when we were buying a house in uh, just well, north. in Georgetown, right? Exactly. I and mean, we were, I'll tee you up, but sure. you're the one that solved the problem. We were wanting to buy a house. We were moving to Austin. We were looking for a house that had certain criteria. Um, you know, we were picky, but not that picky, honestly. Yep. And um, the agent we were working with was not looking in a broad enough area because he didn't know anything about the areas outside of his particular relatively... His zone of Austin. His zone of Austin was smaller than what it should have been. And so he wasn't showing us anything outside of that zone of Austin. Well, Julie figured out that he wasn't, he was only searching within, I think it was like a 10 mile radius yeah. of, I forget where, mm -hmm. that little community kept on steering us towards. I know, whichever was which, called. well, that was his favorite community. It's where he lived and a lot of his deals were there. Exactly. So, and Julie you know. just punched out a little bit from that area. And guess what? We found this perfect house we wanted to buy and we bought it without seeing it. And he'd never been there before. Like we're, the whole we were damn super town. super motivated. <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah. but the moral of the yeah. story is, is don't, essentially don't become the fly in the ointment to helping your buyers find homes because yeah. you'll be oftentimes shocked how willing they are to change their supposed rigid criteria. Well, that's right. So part of it comes from the agent. Part of it might be because the buyer client hasn't really thought about that. If they're saying, I only want this school district, well, what's so awesome about that school district? Now, if their kids have been there for five years and they're just not going to leave, fine. They're probably very attached to that. But if they're moving there and they just read an article that said that's the number one school district, or well, who's the number two school district? Or they talk to some other agent or watch some video on YouTube where someone's like, you know, give them limited information based on their own biases, based on their own, you know, yes. very limited perspective on that particular community. You guys get it? This all goes back to asking more questions. This always goes back to pre-qualifying them, asking more questions, really helping 
through your questions, and that's what a script is. A question, a script is nothing other than a bunch of questions that are elegantly weaved together. But when you're asking them these questions, they're then going to self-discover that it turns out they're actually more open to different things than what they maybe yeah. were presenting to you a second it's ago. It's being more professional. The other one is, I want, I don't want an old house. Well, why not? I don't want all the repairs. Well, what about a beautiful neighborhood with tree-lined streets and sidewalks with a house that's been rehabbed? right? Expand your search. Maybe you never would have searched in that zip code. Okay. Or, or they, I mean, like we can go on forever. Right? I know. I'm looking, well, it's because you and I are doing this podcast knowing tens of thousands of agents are listening. And because we've done it for so long, we know that someone's going to hear what I'm about to say. They're going to all of a sudden sell a house this Light weekend bulb. and they're going to then basically thank us. Well, here's another one. Okay. I'm looking for a deal. Okay. Oh yes. Sellers. I'm sorry. Buyers say this all the time in all price ranges, by the way, in all markets. Exactly. I'm looking for a deal. And then you in your realtor brain are going to think, well, a deal must mean he's looking for, or she's looking for a great price, right? Or they're, a foreclosure. Or a foreclosure. Oh, you know, this isn't a great deal because in your, and me, you even think of, well, it must be 20% off whatever the market is. Okay, no, that's actually not what the buyer actually meant. A good deal did not necessarily have anything to do with price in the eyes and the mind of that buyer. So what they're then going to say, what you need to say, Mr. Buyer, I appreciate that. I hear that a lot from folks. Um, so what does a good deal mean to you specifically? What is it that that means to you? And you will discover that they might have unrealistic expectations. Has to be 50% off list. Well, Buena suerte, buddy. There's the door. They're never going to buy a house, right? They're just looky-loos, time wasters. You got better use of your time. Or, and this is what you're mostly going to discover, a good deal to them means they can move in before school goes back. A good deal means to them that it's going to be close to all the things that are most important to them. A good deal means the house doesn't need any work. Or you a four-bedroom in their price range. Exactly. So don't assume it's the money because it very rarely is. Most people do not ever make decisions based purely on money. And when you hear these talking heads talking about the fact that the market, the you know, interest rates go up. The market crashes. Bullshit. The reason there are not more home sales right now is because there are not more homes for sale. People would buy up it, all the, you know, it, interest rates. Interest rates could probably double. And people, I get it. First time buyers will be pinched, but for the most part, move up buyers or move up sellers. You know, you guys get my point. That have equity, they would buy every single home that came for sale. There's not an interest rate or payment problem. There's an inventory problem. Which brings us to point number two, which we did touch on. Expand the search. We're still talking about the MLS here. Expand your search for your buyers geographically. If they say they want these three zip codes in Austin, for example, identify why those zip codes and find other areas that have more inventory but feel similar to those zip codes. For the same for school districts, amenities, et cetera. Maybe they just like the neighborhood park, but there's a better one 10 miles away that they don't even know about. Okay, point number three. Connect with investors like the We Pay Cash for Homes guys, they advertise everywhere, or We Buy Ugly Houses, you see their billboards, or similar. Those investors don't purchase every home they're presented with. What happens to their turndowns? These might make good matches for your buyers or even for you to flip and turn into a rental or turn into a rental. Find investor groups at meetup.com or start your own. There's investor groups on Facebook as well. There are lots of private groups for investors and flippers. And the last two that the Kenmores did uh, themselves for investments and flips came from these types of investors that, that flip homes. But those are small investors. They don't purchase everything they get called on. A good number of you guys listening to this podcast don't have real estate licenses and you're wholesaling and you're asking me, should I get a real estate license? The answer is always going to be yes. So you don't have to ask anymore. But for those of you with real estate license that are representing buyers, uh, you can contact a lot of these wholesaler types and you can see what they got turned down on. Because again, what, uh, especially in a market like this, frankly, if the house needs work done, fixed up, the investor is probably going to make a, an offer of 20, or I'm sorry, 80 cents, if not 70 cents on the dollar. Most sellers are going to turn them down, which means you're going to then be able to get those prospective listings from those actual investors. And usually they're not even going to ask you for a referral fee. That's right. And they, they do. I've actually listened to a podcast about how they uh, will look at the potential of a house down to if the only way for that investor that we pay cash guys or whatever, the only way for them to monetize a flip 
is to make an addition. There are places, there are a lot of towns that say you can only add a certain percent to the size of a house, right? Or you can only, there was one that, that said you can only go to 42% of the lot size. And if that investor does the calculation, it's just a math problem. And they say, oh, not enough meat on the bone. I'm not going to buy it. Thanks for the call. That's still a potential lead. Right? And a lot of these investors, a lot of them might have actual houses that they bought to flip, but because their cost of money has gone through the roof and none of them, you know, some of them were using hard money and whatnot. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. The moral of the story is contact the investors. But a lot of the investors, uh, their math doesn't work anymore. They can't spreadsheet out a, a flip that they had that they were sitting around thinking about they're going to start on next month or whatever. Labor's gone up. Cost yep. of money has gone up. Cost of materials have gone up. It's called inflation and it is not going anywhere. Well, guess what? That might be an investor that's ready to sell that house. Yes, which I would call a high quality contact. Why? Because the investor themselves might be the listing lead, to your point. And they may have some turndowns that they didn't buy. Those are also listing leads. So that's one contact, multiple opportunities. And you can find out who the big active investors are, the ones that are actually looking for wholesale deals, essentially, is you can, you know, put a house for, just ask, you, first of all, ask the ML, go to your MLS and the other agents that have houses that look like they're uh, priced well, if not under market. And ask them who the investors are that called. Go to the Facebook. Go to the meetup groups. Mm -hmm. Join your local, uh, you know, like Julie said, there's a lot of them meet in church basements and restaurants. A lot of them, it's going to be like five or six guys. They just meet every, you mm -hmm. know, Wednesday for pancakes. Show up, befriend them, and then say, listen, I'd love to be able to, you know, help the folks that you guys aren't able to help. And here's how we can work together. Now, why are they going to want to flip those to you? Some of them are going to have licenses, so you can't pay them referral fees. But what they're all going to want are the opportunities that you come across for potential wholesales that are might be good flips for them that you can then send back to them. In other words, Mr. Uh, Mr. Investor, if you come across somebody that doesn't want to sell a house to you, but you know that's a seller that has to sell, I'd love the opportunity to work with that seller. And I'll tell you what, when I come across somebody that is in a situation where they want to sell the house and they don't have time or inclination to retail it, I'll send that to you. Start building relationships. Very good. Okay, point number four, and this is one of my favorite ones. Coach Rochelle's very good at this as well. New build sales reps, they can be a gold mine, especially in medium and luxury new construction communities. They don't take resale listings and they won't take a home sale contingency. This means they know who has a home to sell before they can close on the new one. Now, if they're licensed, you can pay them a referral fee. And if they're not, you can give them gift cards, take them to dinner, coffee, bring them treats, aim for five relationships like this. Again, here's a category where you can have one relationship with that new build rep and have multiple opportunities. They are a salesperson all day long, every single day. They are talking to people. And we said medium to luxury because those people who are going to build with them will have a house to sell. Well, also the big national builders, um, they're going to be the, you know, they're going to be able to send you straight up listing referrals. And that's great too. Don't believe them for a second that they don't have agents that they send listing leads to. Of course they do. Julie and I, when we sold real estate, we got listing leads from uh, new build reps this way. But also the thing is, is they might not want to work every Saturday and Sunday. And maybe mm -hmm. if it's a small or medium sized builder, you can volunteer to sit in their model home for them, meet with prospective buyers. Yes, if you sell one of the new construction homes to one of your buyers that walks in to their model, you'll get paid a buyer's commission. Yeah. But you then can start building a relationship based on the fact that you're going to help them go to Johnny or Susie's T-ball uh, game. You guys get it? That's right. So the question to ask that uh, sales manager is, what hours are the model not covered? Well, you know, this is funny, but... I've known agents, and I've certainly we've had coaching clients. What they'll do is they'll hang out on the uh, weekends or on the days of the week, usually during the weekday, yeah. where the new construction there's just not it's, it's not, not being manned; it's just closed. And they'll go park a car in the driveway, and they'll have grabbed a whole bunch of the builders, you know, marketing collateral. They'll wait for the prospective buyers to pull up, and they'll say, "Hey, I, you know, blah blah blah. How do you do? I'm so and so with so you know with the yep. XP Realty." And then you all of a sudden have a great buyer lead who is going to want to work with you. And when they come back on the weekend and they're going to be registered under you and you're going to get a commission on the house, the new construction that they're going to buy with that build rep. Um, and then by the way, they have a house to sell. You guys get it. It's called getting away from your keyboards <laughs> and stepping away from the TikTok and going out there and actually making it happen. You know, that's funny. I hadn't thought about that point in a while. You and I sold a few houses that way when we would go, we always on loved accident. on accident because we loved new construction. We we're just educating ourselves. But what happens at around five or six o'clock in the evening, 
those model homes close, what, who comes to look and drive through those neighborhoods after work between 5 and 7 p.m.? Some of those popular neighborhoods are crawling with potential buyers. We weren't like poaching buyer leads from the build no. reps. That's not how We were just that? in the neighborhood educating ourselves. We saw people, we knew the product at that point. What questions do you have about the neighborhood? We happen to be looking here ourselves, you know, and that can turn into deals. You remember, um, I, in the back of our neighborhood in Augusta Glen, when the, the last builds yeah. were in there, and I was walking our dog, and I saw this guy that was like looking in the windows, what's going on, is this still available? And I asked him, and I, I, he's like, yeah, I think I wanna buy this, but nobody's ever here. This was a small builder. And I said, give me two minutes to get back, get my electronic key, and I'll show you the house. And we sold that to him. He hadn't bought it yet just because he couldn't find anybody there. It was 400 grand. I do remember yeah, it. Yeah, And he awesome. was a super nice guy. He was, he was a super, super nice guy. And didn't want to see anything else. Just Nothing else. He wanted to buy that house. One, one showing, one sale done. And it wasn't in the MLS. Was not in the MLS. That's right. Okay. So we digress. Speaking of new builds, uh, point number five, new build sales reps can also tell you which homes are about to fall out of contract. If they don't already have somebody to buy it, this is an off-market new construction listing. This is happening with higher interest rates with stricter lending standards. Some people are becoming unqualified or choosing not to pay that higher payment. By the way, I yeah. just need to inject. When he put that for sale, he listed with us. Do you remember that? Oh, that's right. Yeah, super and, and nice I guy. Because I remember he decorated it atrociously. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we had to go in there and de-decorate it. But anyway. I know. So, so, uh, we're still a listing, though. All right. Yeah. Point number six, also one of my favorites, for rent by owners. This is different than for sale by owners. For rent by owners of single family homes, duplexes, uh, maybe quads, they are advertising their phone number. The script is simple, and it's a business decision for them. They're also a great resource to have in place for your wayward sellers who have sold but not yet bought. Okay, enhance that. Let's talk about VRBOs. Yes, that too. We'll Same do, category. We'll do a 0.7. Bonus point, bonus point. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, well, let's actually use numbers we know. Okay. All right, so our neighbor uh, has a house that, we're, that we are renting uh, in Carmel-by-the-Sea, mm -hmm this year for car week. Yes. That's in um, California. If you don't know Carmel by the sea. Right. And the house is, she paid, oh, let's give me the real numbers. Yeah. Go ahead. I, I'm trying to, I always mix 2. up. Her, I think it was 2.75. Yes. Right. Okay. And they pay cash for it. So Julie and I did the math on this and we found, Julie found out from the property manager, uh, the average monthly revenue before all their expenses and before the actual you know, when you do short-term rentals, you have uh, you have to pay 10% usually. 10% management fees, yeah. Right. So we did all the math on it, and the return on investment, remember they could pay cash, the return on investment was like 4.25%, mm -hmm. and that's assuming nothing broke, and they would have been better off if they had taken that $2.7 million and put it into treasury bonds. Now, you're going to say, well, they get what about the appreciation of the property? And you're correct. That's the only way they're going to ever have any chance of an upside on that property is if it appreciates. Now, why am I telling you this? Because if they had a mortgage against it, and let's say they put 30% down, they would have been writing a check every month for that property of five or six grand. Okay, big list, big, yeah. big thinkers, are you hearing what I'm saying? How many VRBOs in your particular marketplace are the people losing their asses on every single month mm -hmm. and they're no longer because, uh, you know, their only way of ever making money on it was the hypothetical appreciation. And now because of a lot of the misinformation that's out there about housing values, a lot of people are thinking, well, maybe the salad days of home appreciation are behind me and they would love to get rid of that negative cash flow they have on that rental property. You guys understanding what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you can tell too, because you can get into their calendar and see how frequently it's rented, right? Yep. So our example of our neighbor was in a very popular VRBO uh, town and very commonly rented, right? I'm sure that she's you know, pushing it uh, to as far as she can, and it's still had that math issue of only being at about 4.5%. And that's handled by a management company. So she has all the ducks in a row cute house, popular neighborhood, popular town, handled by a management company, and still it's only at 4.5%. And that was with her paying cash. If she had a mortgage Correct. against it, she had been losing money every single month. And I'm here to tell you guys, a lot of the VRBOs in your, not all of you have VRBOs, I get it, but a lot of you who have these short-term rental properties in your marketplace, those sellers are, those owners are losing their butts on those properties. They bought them, and maybe some of them have long-term low interest rates, which might work out or for cash. them cash flow-wise. Yeah. 
But now that they're not overly optimistic about their uh, rate of return, maybe they're not thinking that, it, well, hell, treasury bonds are going to be four and a half, five percent. Maybe they paid cash. Maybe they can do the math themselves and realize they're going to have a lot less liability and risk if they just put the money there. They're going to buy 90 day treasury bonds. They're going to put in their 500,000 from the rental property and they're going to put that, you know, five percent to work. And every 90 days, they're going to get five percent on that 500 grand. So they're going to get 25 grand every 90 days and assuming rates stay there after a year, they're going to have made a hundred thousand dollars before taxes on the T-bills. You guys get it. A lot of sellers, when they're actually given the option to invest like that, will happily sell the property, but you have to call them and let them know what's actually going on. You have to make the effort. You have to do the real work of real estate. And you know, there's a really cool thing on those VRBO sites that's called contact the owner. Yeah. <laughs> it has, oftentimes it has phone numbers. Occasionally it'll be a property management. So look up, you know, know who you're calling, but oftentimes it is managed by the actual homeowner and it also will give you their email address. So no excuses on that point, right? Yeah, guys, get to work. Seriously, this is your market. If you make it your market, if you're waiting around for things just to pop up in the MLS, I don't really know how you're going to survive. And this is just, you know, the, we're going to give you, I think, seven more uh, sources of hidden inventory tomorrow. But drill down on these points. We gave the easiest ones first, frankly. Yes. So absolutely take action on this. Your next natural step, it, I mean, clearly this isn't coaching. We're just training. This is a podcast. Your next natural step is to join Premier Coaching. The links to join are in the show description. Just scroll down, read the show description, uh, click the link, or just go to premiercoaching.com. In the meantime, thank you, thank you, as always, for keeping this the number one listen to daily podcast for real estate professionals in at least the United States. And we certainly welcome all the international listeners we're picking up. It's fantastic that so many of you are finding what we have to offer and frankly, the practical, tactical, BS-free uh, approach to uh, selling real estate and being of service to others, such a revelation. Please help us stay in alignment with what our overall mission is, which is frankly helping as many real estate professionals as we can. If you're on iTunes, do give us a five-star review and leave a piffy comment. It takes two seconds to do. It means the world to us. It really can help us get the word out that this is your market if you choose for it to be. Have a fantastic day. We'll talk with you on the show tomorrow. Hello, thank you for having watched this video. Please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's right, and don't forget to hit that like button, leave your comments and questions below, and we will get right back with you. Thank you for watching this video. Remember to watch the next one. You're gonna love that one.